Jeff. Welcome. Please stand as you are able. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised.
Please be seated. The Gospel of John tells us that the crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, singing and shouting with confidence. After describing the crowd, however, the Gospel writer zooms in on the disciples and tells us that while the crowds shouted praise at Jesus, the disciples were confused. The text says the disciples did not understand what was happening. A lot of our lives may look like this. Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout about it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade and missing out on our chance to sing. That is why we need the prayer of confession, because life happens fast, and without a doubt, we have stood where the disciples stood. So let us pray, for we don't want to miss out on our chance to sing. Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall. Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could lead the parade, but instead find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us which songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead, and then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Friends, no matter where we stand on the parade route, whether we're waving palm branches through the streets or standing against the wall, quiet and cautious, Jesus marched for us. Jesus' love, his striving for justice and mercy, it was for us. We are included in this story and nothing can ever change that. So hear these words and trust them deep in your bones. We have a reason to sing, for Jesus Christ loved us yesterday, Jesus Christ loves us today, and Jesus Christ will live us tomorrow. We are forgiven, claimed, and sent to serve. Go out and sing. Go out trusting these words. Hosanna. Amen. Please stand as you are able. When the crowds shouted, save us, that's exactly what he did. So let us share signs of Christ's peace with one another, saying the peace of Christ be with you. Share that peace.
As we go to God's word, let us go to God in prayer. God of grace, your word is like a song. It is a melody that we long to sing. The refrain we pray will get stuck in our heads. So as we return to scripture once more, we pray that you would allow us to sink into this song. Allow us to hear the truth between the words. Allow the cries of the crowd's hosannas to feel like our own. With open hearts and open ears we pray, amen. Our first lesson this morning is Psalm 118, verses one and two and 19 through 29. I'll be reading from the in Common English Bible. Give, thank, give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it, God's love lasts forever. Open the gates of righteousness for me so I can come in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. Those who are righteous enter through it. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. Lord, please save us. Lord, please let us succeed. The one who enters in the Lord's name is blessed. We bless all of you from the Lord's house. The Lord is God. He has shined a light on us. So lead the festival offering with ropes all the way to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will lift you up high. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
All four Gospels record the Palm Sunday narrative. And of the four accounts, John's is the most concise. Throughout John's Gospel, a recurring theme is misunderstanding. And the Palm Sunday narrative is no exception. So hear now these words from John's 12th chapter, verses 12 through 16 from the Common English Bible. And listen, not to, but listen for the word of God. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. They shouted, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessings on the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, don't be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand these things at first. After he was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Look at you. There are smiles on your faces. I can feel the excitement in the room. You are waving your palm branches. Okay, maybe some of you are waving them more like this. It's okay, you're Presbyterian, I get it. I love your spirits. I love your sense of joy and celebration. And I can imagine that it captures just a little bit of the emotional vibe that the crowd felt that day while watching Jesus make his way into Jerusalem. Excitement must have been electric. People from all over were coming into the city of Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. I'm sure they had children along with them that, that added extra layers of joy and excitement and, and maybe a little chaos. The air was permeated with the smell of food being prepared, spices competing only with the barnyard smell of the lambs that had been selected for the Passover meal. Palm Sunday is a time of festal gathering, palm branches, bright music and exuberance spilling out into the aisles and out into the streets as we did this morning. It's a large day of celebration that for churches all around the world. It's a celebration that's built on the scriptural witness of the crowds gathering to cheer on Christ's entrance into Jerusalem. The grand celebration of this scripture sets it apart in liturgical tradition. Almost all of our liturgical stories come from those small, intimate moments in the Bible. The birth of Jesus happens between a handful of strangers in a quiet stable on a hillside. Jesus' resurrection occurs when three women have an earth-shattering encounter in an empty tomb. Palm Sunday is different. This day has always been about the whole family of Jesus' followers coming together with shouts and celebration. We tend to focus on the excitement of this day, but there were many other emotions at play on that first Palm Sunday. We're told that a great crowd gathers together. They, they shout, they wave branches. They definitely do not keep at least six feet apart. They made complete spectacles of themselves, throwing their cloaks down on the path, 
this could only mean one thing. The king was coming. They were in complete uproar. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Hosanna to the son of David. Can it really be true? They were, for at least one brief moment, thoroughly convinced that Jesus was the one for whom they had been waiting, the King of Israel. We don't know what led them to that conclusion, but they remember the prophecy of Zechariah that referenced a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. They see Jesus parade as that moment of fulfillment of what the prophet had foretold. Like most in the crowd, the disciples, including Peter, probably see this adoring response as further proof that Jesus will overthrow those Roman oppressors, restore Israel to independence. The disciples were swept up by the moment, consumed by the crowds and waving palm branches right along with them. Maybe they thought that this was the day that Jesus would proclaim very loudly and definitively that he was the Messiah that they had been waiting for after all. Maybe this was the day that Jesus would announce his real self to the whole world. They hoped that at last that long, that day had arrived when the Romans would be kicked out and they'd be partners with him in the building of the righteous kingdom that had been foretold. Maybe none of the gloomy stuff that Jesus was talking about and scaring him, them with was going to happen. Look, look how these people loved him so much. Maybe they looked at each other and wondered, are we missing something here? Is there something these people see that we don't? I imagine the crowds felt quite confused at what was happening as the events of the day unfolded. On that day, on the other side of town, another parade was happening. Unlike the one that they were attending, that parade had been announced. That was Pilate's parade. It was a show of military might and power, not unlike the kind of parade that they imagined would herald the king of kings. They were surprised and maybe even a bit regretful when Jesus showed up on a donkey and not on a stallion. They began to ask, who is this? They couldn't believe what they were seeing. It wasn't what they were expecting at all. What a letdown. What a huge disappointment. All that trouble to lay out those cloaks and palm branches in the expectation of a mighty conqueror, and this is what they got? This so-called king was dressed in rags. He looked like a common worker. Were we at the wrong parade, they thought? We get, surprisingly, very little from Jesus' perspective. His only action is quite literally at the center of this passage this morning, finding a donkey and sitting on it. Unlike the other three gospel accounts of the Palm Sunday narrative, he does not send some disciples into the village to find a donkey. He does his own finding. He gives nothing to the disciples to say should someone stop them and question their motives. It just happens. He simply sits at the center and fulfills the prophecy as it was foretold, and the crowds were confused. And so were the disciples. The disciples did not understand what is happening except in hindsight. When they got through his glory, it is only then that they remember and understand the events of this day. Only then 
did it all make sense? It's a paradox of the ages. King Jesus will celebrate his own Passover with his life. The one who was born will die. A celebration in Bethlehem leads to an execution in Jerusalem. In many churches, this Sunday has become known as Palm slash Passion Sunday. The idea came about because people were going straight from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, skipping over those middle parts. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. But there is no shortcut to the empty tomb. A lot happens in this week between Hosanna and He is risen. There's Jesus sharing his last meal with those whom he loves the most, washing their feet and giving them a new commandment to say, love one another, all the while knowing that they would betray, abandon, or deny him. There's Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane while Peter and the others couldn't even stay awake for an hour to keep watch. The same crowd that shouted, Hosanna, will shout, crucify him. And Jesus will have his kingship mocked with a crown of thorns and a sign posted above his cross where he hangs. And he will do absolutely nothing to fight back, nothing to take himself down, even though he very well could do all of those things. Our expectations will be thoroughly upended over the next few days. We will be gutted. We will not understand because it escapes human reasoning. But as it turns out, God's will doesn't match ours. That's the power you miss if we don't see you again until next Sunday. The God that we envision as vengeful because we are vengeful or power hungry because we are power hungry, who smites our enemies because we want our enemies smited, that God that God isn't standing in heaven with his arms folded, looking down above the cross in judgment. No, God is hanging from that cross. And the judgment that God will utter on it, forgive them. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. God isn't standing smugly at a distance. God is in the messiness of life, filling it all with abundant grace. The good news of the Holy Week story is the triumph of life over death, but we cannot go to the empty tomb without first stopping at the cross. Knowing that Easter is coming must not make us impatient to get to next Sunday morning. Instead, our Easter knowledge allows us to see the cross itself as the source of our salvation. On that cro cross, our God in Christ saved us. What keeps us from fleeing the cross is precisely our awareness that God in Christ is accomplishing something incredible in and through death. In the march, toward Golgotha and the first steps towards the gospel paradox that death brings life. The sacrifice that solves all has never been wrong in this world. Jesus must walk 
this path, and we must go with him. It's awfully surprising that when the Son of God came to earth, he died so that he, in order to save us. So remember with the disciples. Sing the songs and participate in the rituals of our faith in order to remember who God is in our lives, a self-emptying God who pursues us and saves us relentlessly with terrifying love. God who will ultimately enter the grave and the very stench of death in order to say, even here, I am with you. We need that message this year more than ever. Hosanna in the highest. Blessings on your holy week. Amen. Let us affirm what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated.
As we go to God in prayer, we know that there will be a time when we can offer up our own joys and concerns out loud, remembering that we only share joys and concerns of others if we've been given permission to do so, and that if we share names at all, that we share only first names. We will also end in an invitation to the Lord's Prayer, and there will be a version of it on the screen. You are welcome to pray it that way or in whatever way God has it on your hearts. Let us pray together. Holy God, your son humbled himself even to death to show us the power of loving service. Guide those holding positions of power that their decisions give rise to the mutual flourishing of the world that you so love. Healing God, your son is betrayed and crucified in our violent world each and every day. Raise us to a new and rightly ordered world through the reconciling love of Christ, where all of the victims of violence, persecution, shame, or terror may stand together with you in peace. Forsaken God, as your son suffered his cruel death on the cross, darkness covered the whole land. Enlighten us to care for your creation Awaken us from our denial and abuse and help us to alleviate the world's suffering. Grieving God, your son consoled others in life and in death. We pray for all who are distressed, broken, or sorrowful, that together with Christ in his suffering, we may be healed and raised in you. Eternal God, your son was lovingly cared for as he was laid to rest in a tomb. We remember before you those who have died and pray for those who will die today. Enfold them in your love that they may rest and rise with Christ forever in his light. We pray for all those who are struggling with illnesses we ask that you would bring healing as only you can do. We lift before you the joys and concerns that are on our hearts even now. Lord, hear our prayer. In your passion and resurrection, you show us that there is no place you have not been, no place you fear to go. Morning by morning, you waken us 
more deeply to this truth. So send us into the world this day with the courage and the wisdom to be faithful witnesses to your coming reign of justice, mercy, and peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Jesus gave himself for the life of the world. With humble hearts, bowed in awe, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Never stop working, never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Our God, that is who you are. Miracle worker, promise.
us keep light in the darkness, our God, that is who Let us pray together. Holy God, we give thanks for your saving love made known to us in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Bless these gifts that they may bring life on earth as in heaven. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. No matter how your Holy Week goes, remember, Christ died for you, Christ loves you, Christ loves us all. Hosanna! 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 Amen.